Now we need to figure out the velocity equations. So we'll take the derivative of all of the position equations and the constraint equation. So for the constraint equation, we know that gamma is a constant. So if we take the derivative of this, beta five dot equals beta six dot. This will be a convenient substitution. So now we need to get velocity So in that equation, R1 doesn't have a derivative because it's constant. And the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So now when we'll do the Y equation, derivative of sine is cosine. So this will look similar. And then the red one, note that we're using chain rule here. So all of these theta dots pop out uh, because theta is what's changing. And then we have the time derivative. And R12 and R11 are constant, so those derivatives will be zero. They won't show up in the equations. Now, finally, for the green loop, R9 is not going to have a derivative, and R10 is going to actually be have that part be derivative um, and not the theta because the angle of R10 does not change, but the length does because R10 is the slider. So we'll end up with an R10 dot. So now that we've got these velocity equations, we can substitute out the constraint equation so that we will get our matrices to be six by six and six by one, because we'll need to put it into that J theta equals B to solve. So we'll take this theta five dot equals theta six dot and be able to substitute that out so our unknowns will be down to six. So, Wherever there's a theta six dot, let's just replace that with a theta five dot because that will simplify this. So here and here. So now let's get that into matrix form. So if we put this into form J theta dot equals B. First, let's fill out our theta dot matrix. So that will be all of the unknowns. So we'll have Theta dot, let's see, theta two dot is our input. So we'll start with theta three dot, theta four dot, theta five dot, and remember theta five dot and theta six dot are the same. So then we'll have theta seven dot, theta eight dot, and our 10 dot. So now what goes into the J matrix is going to be the coefficients of all of those. So if we go from, we'll start with the blue loop, X and Y. So coefficients from the X, we'll fill in that first row. It looks like theta three dot and theta four dot are the only unknowns that show up here. So if we take their coefficients, negative R3, S3, and R4, S4, and then the other ones are just all going to be zero because those variables don't show up in the blue equations. So now we'll fill out the Y equation. And then what's left over is the theta two stuff. So we need to move that to the other side so the signs will change and put that in the B matrix. So now we'll do the red. There is no theta three on the red. So we'll put a zero in that spot. And then we have theta four, theta five, and theta seven. And that was all of the variables in the equation. 
um, there was no theta two, so there will be nothing on the BV side. And that's okay. BV can have zeros in it. As long as it's not completely zeros, then you're okay. So finally, we have the green loop. So here you can see that we have theta six and theta five stuff in the same column because they're both times theta five dot. And at this point, it's okay that there's a theta six in there because we would have solved for position already. So then finally, we have the B side and theta two dot stuff shows up in here. So we will transfer that over. So this is how you get velocity, take the derivative of the position equations, put them in matrix form, then you can solve them in MATLAB. So let's take a look at what that looks like. You can see here on the velocity plot, again, um, all of the theta dots are kind of cyclic and R10 looks a little weird. Now, the other thing to note is that because theta five dot and theta six dot are the same, we don't see theta five dot. So theta five dot is the yellow one, make that bigger. So you see there's no yellow curve and that's because theta six dot is plotted right on top of it because those have the same value. 